Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here representing Analytics Course, and I want to talk to you about cross-device tracking in Google Analytics. Now, I have my old handy Google Analytics hoodie here with the JavaScript code of Google Analytics, and just wanted to talk to you about how this code and your choice of tracking Google Analytics properties is affected by cross-device tracking. Basically, if you were to have this code on your site, which is an old-school version of Google Analytics, you wouldn't be able to track people across different devices. And so there is a method to do it, and it involves using the modern-day version of Google Analytics. Some call it analytics.js, some call it gtag.js. Some people serve it up through Google Tag Manager. But the choice you make in the code you select for Google Analytics has an impact on your ability to track people across devices. So if you want to see both a very practical perspective on how cross-device tracking works and get a little bit of a cheeky point of view as to how this thing goes by seeing me with a mustache on, you're not going to want to miss this video because it's the only video that I know of, at least in this 90-day challenge series where I'm wearing a mustache or at least allude to having a mustache. So if you like Jeff, if you like mustaches, if you like cross-device tracking, if you like JavaScript, but we won't even be spending that much time talking about JavaScript, then watch the video. I don't know what you're waiting for. I don't know why we're still doing this. Just watch the stupid video. It's hilarious. It's probably my favorite video that I've ever made about analytics. And the reason why is because I have a mustache on in the video. Okay, check it out. Let's talk about cross-device tracking in Google Analytics. Hi, I'm Jeff. And I'm Jeff too. Me too. Don't forget about me. Yep, that's me as well. We are all the same. Even though I'm using different devices, these are all me. I can access a website through many different ways, many different forms, tablets, computers, desktops, iPhones, Android phones, whatever it is, we are all the same. At least in our minds, we are the same person. But that doesn't mean that we are the same to our analytics tools. Even though we want to have a continuous experience across the sites we visit, we are not the same when we use different devices. As we traverse different websites, we are basically treated as an incognito user. They don't know who we are. The cookies don't get shared across the different devices, and that can cause an analytics tracking nightmare. Our analytics tools don't know who belongs to each device that visits their site. They really just know each device that they see. They think that each device is a unique and delicate snowflake, not a person. They don't think of it as a person. Now, why is this? It's because of cookies. Now, every device is identified by a cookie in Google Analytics. If we look in here, every single device that visits Analytics has something called a client ID that gets set whenever somebody comes to the site. And this is stored in a cookie for each browser, and it's unique to each browser and each device that you use to access a website. And Google Analytics says if a client ID matches between different sessions, between different hits that are sent into their system, they treat them as the same user. So if I had the same client ID across all of these different devices, then we would actually say, hey, it's all Jeff. But if we have different client IDs, which is most common what happens, the system would say, is this really Jeff or not? Is this Jeff or is this just another 80s and 70s hunk with a mustache? The good news is that there's a way for us to enable cross-device tracking so that the client ID gets spread across all the different visits we have, or we can use something that matches up our different visits in the cloud by giving Google Analytics more information. So how do we enable cross-device tracking in Google Analytics? I thought you'd never ask. Now let's first start with a use case. You want to track users, not devices. This is the reason why we have cross-device tracking, because if you were to track just devices, you'd be good to go. That's how it works out of the box. Now, the reason why you want to track users and not devices is because it's accurate, and accurate tracking is fun, and your metrics are impacted by any imperfections in the data you collect. Your conversion rates will be higher than you expect if you track by the user. Your attribution models, they might be disproportionate to last click models like direct and paid search visits that come in because you're not tracking people across devices. Or you might just wanna do something cool. Maybe you're looking for a challenge. Maybe you've learned everything you wanted to learn in analytics and you're looking for some kind of cool challenge. Now there are two ways to do this. There are two ways to do cross device tracking in Google Analytics. Number one is with cookies and number two is in the cloud. And for the rest of this video, I'm going to show you how to do both of these. 
Let's start with cross device tracking with cookies. Now remember this shot of the client ID. We all have this client ID in our browser. Did you know that it's actually possible to access the client ID via JavaScript? At any point in time, somebody can write a function that calls upon Google Analytics and says, tell me the client ID for this person. You can use it as a variable, you can pull it into your browser memory, and you can use it however you want to, and you can use it to send data into your systems, you can use it to send data into Google Analytics, all kinds of cool stuff you can do when you access this client ID via JavaScript. Now what you can do here is you can use this variable to attach it to the user record in your CRM. So you pull that variable and then if you capture an email address or if you update an email address, you can throw that client ID on there, put it as a custom field in your CRM system. You can store it on your browser's local storage and that way you're not really relying on cookies at all, you're just relying on the browser storage. There's some advantages to doing that, some reasons why you might want to consider doing this as well. You can set a new client ID through code, so you can access the client ID here, and you can even override it through code using Google Analytics as well. And you can use the measurement protocol to send hits to this client ID. Now this is a really advanced use case, something that we talk about in our advanced lessons in analytics course, but basically the measurement protocol is a open way to send data into Google Analytics, and it can be any type of hit that you want to and it's basically how Google Analytics works. So you can take this variable from your browser and you can send it into Google Analytics and you can do some really cool things. And I know what you're thinking, you're like, whoa, that's awesome. But you also might be confused a little bit. How does this help you with cross-domain tracking? Well, if you know a user, i.e. they're logged into your system or they clicked on an email, then you can pass along the client ID for that user when they come back to your website. You can access it as a variable and then you can override the cookie client ID in Google Analytics whenever somebody comes to your site. So you can just put that client ID in there, you can put a manual designation, and you can match that person up across devices. And when you do this, Mustache Jeff becomes Clean Shaven Jeff because we have basically matched it up through the client ID, we pulled it in either through our email marketing system, through our backend database, we did something to say, this is actually Jeff, guys. This is not just some random person with a stash. This is Jeff, and he's awesome. And this is how I felt the first time that I learned you could do this. My mind was completely blown. The second way you can do cross-device tracking is in the cloud. Now, there's another way to do cross-device tracking, which we haven't touched upon yet. This doesn't involve manipulating cookies. It involves identifying each unique user through code. This code appends your user ID to the analytics hits that are sent into your Google Analytics data. And Google will match all user IDs in the cloud to join users into one. Now, it's as simple as this. You have one line in your Google Analytics tracking code where you define your user ID. And user ID is a simply a unique variable for each known user. Tell Google the user ID of the person and they're golden, they're good to go. They will match this up for you in the cloud. So let's talk about this. How does this actually work? You simply tell Google Analytics you know who a user is, and they will do the matching in the cloud. It's really pretty straightforward to implement this, but there are some rules behind it. You can't use their email address, their social security number, name, any kind of unique identifier, any kind of personally identifiable information cannot be submitted as part of this. And so here's the warning that Google gives you. You can use user ID, but it has to be something that's not personally identifiable. It should be unique, it should be persistent, meaning it's always the same for that user, but it shouldn't be identifiable. So what can you use as a user ID? You can use your account database user ID. This is something like if your login system has a database record for each person, you can use that user ID. The user ID from your email marketing tool, usually this is a number that is unique and not accessible to anybody else outside of the system. So it's meaningless if it gets outside or if it gets leaked. The CRM user ID, similar to your email marketing ID, but the ID code, the numeric code, generally speaking, that is assigned to each user in your CRM system. Or the randomly assigned ID from your own database system. So you can take any of your own databases, use that ID, and push it in there. As long as it's not something that's universally known outside of Google Analytics that's personally identifiable, you're good to go. It's pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple, but a lot of times people stumble on it because it's pretty advanced. It's a very advanced topic of Google Analytics. You need to tell Google Analytics that you know who somebody is and they will track them for you. Now, before we end this video, there's one final thought. 
You might be wondering yourself, if Google has the Chrome browser and if Google knows everything about everybody on the internet, why don't they do this automatically? And you're not the first one to have this question. Fred from Analytics Course, he wonders, if I'm logged into Google Analytics on each device, is it safe to assume that Google does demographic data, they collect stuff about you, and they feed it across the devices? He wonders if there's a master Fred in some kind of database somewhere that is fed by all devices that Fred is logged into. Now he understands that it's difficult to track across devices, but even if he uses Chrome on a desktop, tablet, and phone, and those are three different sets of cookies, are they merged? Are they the same person? Now, this is a big question, and I don't know if I know the answer definitively. I don't even know if Google would tell us the answer if we asked them. I think there's reasons why they wouldn't be able to tell us that, but I think they do. I think they do match up people up across Chrome. I think they share cookies between Google websites. I think they do all kinds of stuff to track you across the internet. That's one of the main reasons why they make things like the web browser, why they make the Android operating system, because then they have full control over tracking their users and they can know what they're doing. So I think they use it for their own advertising products, but I don't think it's gonna happen for everybody else. I don't think there's gonna be a way that magically Google does cross-domain tracking for you in Google Analytics. Now they do some kind of version of this within Google AdWords. They estimate how many different conversions you have that aren't being tracked, but that's just an estimation. I'm not sure if that's perfect, but I think they have an incentive to do it for their advertising programs because people are making money off of it. They don't have as much of an incentive to do it within Google Analytics because it's a privacy violation and it's a GDPR nightmare. Especially in the European Union, we're not getting closer to having this level of tracking where it's automatically done. We're actually getting further away from that. It's getting to the point where people have to opt in to being tracked at all. And I'm guessing they'd want the privacy and the anonymity of not being tracked by default across different devices. So I'm not sure where this is gonna go. This is something that people ask me all the time. I don't have a clear answer. Maybe you have a better answer and you can leave a comment on this and let us know what you think about it. But I'm gonna leave it up there. So a cross device tracking summary. Mustache Jeff becomes clean shaven Jeff when you use either a client ID or a user ID to track me across the different devices. One of them is done through cookies, the other one's done through the cloud. And this is advanced stuff. So I congratulate you on making it through. Now you might be curious as to how do you implement this. You might have some questions about it. We cover this in great detail in my Google Analytics training course. You can go to analyticscourse.net and check it out. If you have any questions, we have a private forum where you can ask your questions. Plus, like I said, we have videos where we go through this in detail. We look at the code. We talk about exactly how this works. So if this whet your appetite and you wanna learn how to do this thing, you wanna learn how to do it the right way, you need to check out my analytics course because that's what we do. Long form videos teaching you how to be better at analytics and how to do and implement these advanced aspects of Google Analytics. Check it out and I look forward to seeing you inside of analytics course. Thank you.